Alaska Midniners faithful, obviously coming off a disappointing loss to the Seattle Seahawks. But we wanted to give a little shine to something we haven't addressed yet at this point. The season that Nick Bosa is having. He obviously had another big sack in the Seattle game, dragging Russell Wilson back almost like 30 yards seemingly on that strip fumble. That marks his 12th sack in 12 games in 2021, coming off a season and knee injury. For one, that's just incredible. In a year in which we didn't have quarterbacks vying for comeback player of the year, I say Nick Bosa should be a runaway for that category. Jose, Nick Bosa, 2021, tell me why this guy's so special. He's special because he's had to basically do it on his own, right? You look at the rest of that defensive line, which whenever he got, got into this team, got drafted by the Niners, that was the strength of his team. Like heads and shoulders above the rest of any other unit that this team had. But that's not the case at all in this 2021 season, unfortunately. The only real bright spot of this entire defensive line is Nick Bosa. If it weren't for him, I don't know how we get to the quarterback or how we get to the opposition's backfield, if I'm being completely honest to you, because these other guys are just not getting it done. And the fact that Nick Bosa, you mentioned the 12 sacks in 12 games, most of those sacks have come whenever he's got at least two guys on him. At least he's getting, he's probably at least getting chipped by a running back. And then he's got obviously that left tackle. Um, and although the focus of the of protecting a quarterback from the opposite team is all on stopping Nick Bosa and the fact that he's still able to get 12 sacks at this point of the season, it's just not, it's nothing short of remarkable here. Uh, and it's something that it's not really, the, the thing that really like irks me about it is that it's not really talked about. Right. He's not really talked about at all. There, he's not in the defensive player of the year discussions, which is kind of ludicrous to me. Um, the media is just not really talking about him. Every time I see this guy play, it's just an engine that's just nonstop. And the fact that he's getting no love for it kind of pisses me off, actually. What do you think that is? Because obviously we have five games left to go. So he could end up with anywhere from about 15 sacks, I think, is a reasonable end point there. If he, I don't expect him to obviously hit the full 17 for 17. Or push that to 20, things can happen. He could have a crazy Chandler Jones type game and go with a five sack performance. But for now, I'm assuming he's going to finish about 14 to 15 sacks for the remainder of the year, which would be phenomenal. Now, what's going to be crazy is because I feel like he's just going to get no love because the comeback player of the year, obviously, it's not one that's uh, assigned to just offense or defense. It goes to, you know, a mix of both. And in the award season, we know the narrative. We know what happens. It goes to quarterbacks most of the time. So I'm fully expecting, regardless of what happens with the Cowboys the rest of the year, it's going to go to Dak Prescott. So the next tier up, the next thing we can really talk about is defensive player of the year. And the only one that really comes out, stands out to me, I know Aaron Donald, uh, it's practically his award at this point, was he won four of the last five. But Miles Garrett, with his 14-sack season, is obviously up there as well. Now, the problem is I don't think Nick Bosa is going to be able to catch Miles Garrett in the sacks department, so he won't finish with the gaudy season leader in sacks. What would it take for him to get up there? Is it just he has to pass Miles? Because I feel like it's the team that's dragging him down, oddly enough. I feel as though if the Niners' defense was what it was, that once vaunted defense, they would just simply say, best player on best defense. But since the Niners defense is more of a mid-tier defense, he's the best player on a mid-tier defense, which shouldn't be a thing against him because it's individual accolade. And yet it is. Well, yeah, it's technically, I guess, an individual award, but we, we've seen this play out every year. If your team is not within, you know, a successful team, your chances of winning any individual award are basically just gone. And I think um, a part of the reason why he's not getting the attention he does deserve is the six and six record and the fact that the Niners have been uh, kind of wishy-washy when it comes to performance uh, week in and week out. That's basically what it is. If this was the 2019 season and at this point of the year we had 10 wins um, or even eight wins, then he would be getting, be getting talked about a lot more. But the fact that um, it's so unfair to him, by the way, that's super unfair because, you know, everyone, he made such a splash his rookie year that. People, of course, we're going to talk about that. And the Niners had a 13-win season, so it was easy to talk about him. Um, he's had a better year this year than he did his rookie year, I believe. Uh, individually, he, he has. The numbers sh certainly show that he's had a better year. And add in the injury last year? It's even add more in the phenomenal. Injury. Add, add in the injury. Coming off a, a ACL tear and coming back the very next, se next season and putting up these numbers in a position that he plays, which is 
just such a physically grueling position that he plays to begin with. Um, that's basically what it is. The fact that the Niners aren't performing as well as a lot of people thought they were, that's basically putting him in a shadow behind a couple of other guys. You mentioned Miles Garrett. It's he'll probably likely be defensive player a year, barring a big injury in the last few weeks of the season. He is for some reason doesn't play these last few games. If he goes and plays, you know, even you know, a shadow of what he's been able to uh, put up um, uh, up to the, up to this point this year, I think it's, it's his award to lose at this point, which is unfortunate because I think Nick Bosa definitely deserves a little bit more talk and a little bit more consideration for that award. Do you think it's Nick's personality too? Because I feel as though you listen to him in press conferences. He's not a loud dude. He's not a very vocal guy. He's not one that's making a lot of noise other than the one time in which he grabbed the flag or did the whole flag gesture with Baker. I feel like that's the only time I've really heard him stand out. He doesn't do ads that I'm aware of. He doesn't do any commercials. Um, plus he kind of gets a little bit of shine taken off him because Joey exists. Right. Right. No. Yeah. That, ha- that has to do something with it. Um, actually, Aziz al Shair, who actually got the majority of the press conference attention um, the last week, uh, stepping in for Fred Warner, they asked him about Nick Bosa and what he brings to the team. The first thing that he said is, well, he's a really quiet guy, but once you get to know him, he'll actually start talking to you a little bit. That has to do a lot with it. His personality, the fact that he's a pretty quiet dude, um, probably has to do with it. You know, you know, these awards, a lot of the time they're voted by media guys they are voted for pe- from people around the league that want to make the league look good. Um, it's hard to give it to a guy you don't really see off the field. Right. It's, it's it is a little bit hard to do that. So, yeah, yeah his personality definitely has to do something with it, which I mean, if you're, if he's going to be like that, his rest of his rest of his career, as long as the numbers are up, I dude, you could be as shy, as quiet as you want. As long as you're playing like this, dude, you could do whatever you want. I think that that's why it's important that we're doing this video right now. I'm sure Niners yes. beat reporters everywhere are going to be doing this video too, like to kind of encapsulate how good Nick Bosa has been because it's just flying so under the radar. I think the big thing is just one of the national media guys has to roll with it. If, you know, like someone like a coward or Rich Eisen starts mentioning it, then suddenly that changes the entire perception of how this vote starts to take place. We know how this thing works at this point. So, you know, I'm just putting it out there. Nine fans, obviously, leave likes on this video because this gets it out there to more people. And then maybe this gets it out there to the right people. And then maybe Nick Bosa is named Defensive Player of the Year and Comeback Player of the Year, one year removed from the ACL in 2022. How about it? Let's get that going. Anyway, hit that subscribe button because obviously it helps us even more to get out to more Niners faithful like you. And of course, Juju Talk Sports here, Jose Corral. We're 49 Reasons to Listen with two right here. So we, We'll see you next time.